Hi, I'm Pastor Scott, and this is Extraordinary Connection. Today, I want to conclude our Christmas tradition series by looking at the story of the wise men. This coming Sunday is Epiphany Sunday, the traditional day that we think about those men who came from the East following a star to see the baby Jesus and who brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The story comes right out of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. It says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I omitted the middle pieces with their encounter with King Herod, and I just focused on the pieces of the story that I'd like to look at today. And honestly, friends, that's all we know about the story for sure. But over time, our traditions have filled in the other parts of the story. First, the age-old question, how many were there? Did you notice the Bible doesn't say? Tradition says three came because of the three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But two could have easily given the three gifts, or four or six wise men. We don't know. And a fun fact for you, the Syriac Christian Church says 12 wise men came that day. Were they kings? If your church celebrates Epiphany Sunday, you will, I'm pretty certain, sing We Three Kings. Remember that song? We three kings from Orient are, bearing gifts we traverse afar. Well, Matthew never called them kings. They were magi. Magi were priests of a sort or sorcerers. They might have been kings as well, but we don't know. The reason we traditionally call them kings is because of two Bible verses in the Old Testament. Psalm 72.10 says, May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring him gifts. And Isaiah 63 says, Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. But were they really kings? We don't know. And then, where did they come from? There's an old manuscript from about 500 CE that gave the three wise men names and countries of origin. The tradition in the West is they were Melkor from Persia, Gaspar from India, and Balthazar from Arabia. But if you asked a Chinese Christian, they would insist one of the wise men came from China. And if you ask an Armenian Christian or an Ethiopian Christian, they would give you different names for the wise men. And Matthew never named them, did he? So why have we added these extra pieces to our tradition? Why did we settle on three wise men and then try and name them and call them kings? Because we are terrible with mystery and the unknown. We want answers. It's how we're hardwired. What's the first question we learn as children? Why? Why, Dad? Why, Mom? Why, why, why? Little kids ask so many why questions, we eventually devolve down to the because I said so answer. We want to know why someone got sick and why someone else got well. We want to know why the car accident happened and why the marriage failed and why did COVID come. We want to know why because, as we rationalize to ourselves, if we understand the why, then everything will make sense. There'll be order and structure, and it'll provide us with a sense of closure and understanding, particularly when something goes wrong in our life. The thing is, especially in our faith, in matters of spirituality, there are way more questions than answers. 
If God already knows our thoughts and desires of our hearts, why do we have to pray? Why is there evil in the world at all? Why does God allow evil to continue? Why put a tree in a garden and tell Adam and Eve, don't touch it? Why did Judas betray Jesus? There are parts of the biblical story that we just don't have answers to. There are parts of God's nature we can't codify and unlock and describe. Being a Christian means knowing Christ, following his teachings, but also being able to sometimes go without specific answers and specific facts. As Christians, instead of demanding answers, we rely on faith to fill in the pieces that we just don't have answers to. As you celebrate Epiphany Sunday, as you begin the new year, I pray you can find space in your life to be comfortable and to rest with the unanswered whys in your life. And instead of focusing on the why, I encourage you to focus on the where, where Christ is. Because even in our most difficult why moments, Christ is there, Emmanuel. And I'll see you again at extraordinaryconnection.org.